Welcome to the Fingernail Fixer vlog, where we cover everything from art to the artists, nails to nail techs, and everything in between. Today, you're gonna meet Nicole and Bruce Atwood of Atwood Industries, and we're gonna cover a few things to do with e-files. E-files can be an amazing tool to have in your treasure chest that really helps save on your hands and can be a wonderful way to keep you from getting carpal tunnel. Let's meet Bruce and then Nicole. Hey, uh, welcome to the Fingernail Fixer vlog. I am interrupting the Bruce Atwood at Nail Camp while he works on e-file repairs for those that brought them to ask some questions that I have and that some of you have about e-files, about e-file bits, and later we will add in Nicole Atwood to ask about when to use which bits, because even though it's personal preference, it's hard to develop a personal preference if you don't know which ones to try and what situations. So Bruce, as far as materials go, there are so many different types of bits, like there's carbide, there's diamond, there's ceramic. How do we know which ones are good? Like, what is the difference between diamond, ceramic, and carbide? The, the diamond sands the nail, like sandpaper. Okay. And the carbide shaves it because it's got teeth on it. Okay. And, and most carbides are made for, for a right-handed. They go one certain way. Okay, you can use uh, the cross-cut carbide, can go both ways, but an extra course for a righty would be like a medium for a lefty. That's okay. why I, I make specific a lefty, um, lefty carbide bits. Okay. And cool. I think they work pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is nice to acknowledge that people are left-handed. Yeah. And give them something that's going to be more efficient. Yeah, but there's a lot of companies also saying, oh, these will go both ways the same. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. Okay. Uh, and so then if uh, one is sanding and one is cutting, shaving. 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 Okay. Yeah then the shaving would be more for debulking? Uh, you can you can use a fine one also for smoothing okay, for and smoothing. finishing. Okay, cool. Uh -huh. And then what would be the difference then for ceramic? So, um, ceramic, I don't have that much expertise in it. All I know is my, as my wife, she tried one and she goes, we got to get these things. We got to get some of these. I said, fine. And, and I got I got a whole bunch of them and she started using them and after two weeks she said it's dead mm -hmm. i don't like these anymore mm -hmm. i go okay dear <laughs> let's move on <laughs> so the material moves down faster yeah, on a, a lot faster. ceramic mm -hmm. than on a diamond yeah. or a carbide they work great for you know a week or two mm -hmm. and then... okay and as far as disinfection does carbide and diamond hold up to most disinfectants yeah, right are they pretty Diacetone. rust proof uh -huh. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah uh, depending on the material, I mean, carbide, stainless steel, for example, it stains less than steel, but it can still get, it can still develop rust. Mm -hmm. I learned okay. that the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> right? You still have to take care of it because yeah. it'll still oxidize. Yeah, yeah, and make sure you dry off the bits, at, you know, after you sterilize. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's really important. You have to scrub them, dry them, yeah. disinfect them dry them but yes. make sure you dry them because if you put them back into the machine and they're a little bit wet it's going to cause rust okay and then, so make sure then you're, you're drying gonna, your bits because yeah, they're too expensive for rust yeah what are some things we can do to make sure that our hand pieces don't break down well just just that that prior thing about making sure your bits are dry uh, but generally i mean it, it I've, I've got these things called Protex. Wait, let me, let me grab it. And they, <clears throat> they slide onto your bits. Oh, very nice. similar to this right here. Oh. So it, it, it acts as a cover okay. over the um, over the handpiece and it eliminates the, the dust from going in the very front part because mm -hmm. you got a bearing here, you got a bearing down here. So there's a bearing here and a bearing here. Mm -hmm. But ma mainly it's that very front one that, that if you don't have something like this, it's it's liable to 
clog up and then pretty soon you're hearing that weird noise or whatever and and then it starts heating up and so when our e-file starts to actually have more sound to it that's what we're hearing is the dust in that bearing M mainly okay mm -hmm. so keep that in your mind e-file getting noisier is generally an indication that it needs some maintenance and mm -hmm. i find that my handpiece needs maintained about every other year but i only mm -hmm. view clients every other week Mm -hmm. So, is it normal to need it yearly for someone that works full time? I, I know. I I I just suggest mm -hmm. that you, if you, it starts sounding weird, okay, it's time to send it in, and that could be five years. Okay. You know, so it just depends. It depends on, on your yeah, usage. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. And do these basically kind of extend how long you can they go help. between maintenance? They help. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, if you drop your handpiece, does it need maintenance? Probably. You just kind of go, oh it shit. Sanding no, well. just kidding. <laughs> 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 I get a tear in my eye if I almost <laughs> drop my my handpiece, much right. less drop it. Yeah. So, and gen generally, it, it won't. It doesn't bother it, but every now and again, you can you can hit off a, a head of a, a of a bit, and then you get it stuck, and then you got to send it to me. Okay. Yeah. And can they go through your website to send you hand pieces for maintenance? Yeah. And do you maintenance e files as well, or just hand pieces? Just hand pieces. Okay. Cool. Just hand pieces, because the motor's in the hand piece. All the the control box does is it's got a circuit board and a, and a transformer in it. Okay. And, you know, variable speed or whatever. Awesome. Yeah. So, handpiece maintenance is really important. And if you need your handpiece maintained, it's a good idea to have a backup so that you can send in Very good. your handpiece ma for maintenance. <laughs> and shows or networking events are a really good time to get a backup handpiece when they're on sale or on deal. Watch for Black Friday sales. Labor Day, Memorial Day, those types of things on manufacturer websites mm -hmm. and get that second hand piece so that you can send your hand piece in when it needs it because it's really important to keep your hand piece in good shape. Otherwise, you're just going to end up needing a new hand piece and it's and more money and yes. more money. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's less expensive to pay for maintenance than yeah. it is to pay for a new hand piece. And, and I am going to need to buy some of these today because. Yeah. I definitely need to keep dust out of my little thingamajig because even though I have my whisper coming over sucking the dust out, it still gets a little bit of dust around my bit. Yeah. So I definitely want to get some of this today. But yeah. I'll quit bugging you so that you can work on hand <laughs> okay. pieces. Thank you for your time and You're I will welcome. be back with you guys with Nicole later for which bits to start using so that you know how to figure out your personal preference. Hey y'all, this is Nicole Atwood at the Atwood booth at Premier Orlando. And you know, I always have questions about e file everything because just the questions. You know how it is with e files. And so I thought I would stop by and see what Nicole's favorites are because she's really good at it. And I'm still not great at it. I still need to learn some more. So I thought you would enjoy learning with me. Are you ready? So what is your first favorite? My first favorite is going to be our Orange Crush, Double Orange Crush, and I use him for or her for debulking, uh, taking down acrylic and gel, uh, removing gel polish, and you want to use that at a high speed. You want to use it at 20,000 RPMs or higher, depending on your machine. Okay, cool. Okay. And what grit was that? Uh, that one's about a medium, but it has teeth, so it's a little different than something that has flutes. Okay. Okay, so a little more aggressive. It's going to dig. That's why you want to use the higher speed. Okay, okay. cool. And what is your next favorite? Um, my next favorite is probably this little baby right here. That's our number nine prep. Cool. And he is great for pushing back the cuticle and prepping the nail plate at the same time. Awesome. So and it's kind of knocking it. off that skin, dead skin yes. on the surface. And you would use it at a low speed. Low speed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. around like five to seven? Actually, I'd go a little lower depending on your machine. Like on my particular machine, it's like one to two. Oh, wow. So different machines run different. Okay. Okay. So closer to like one, two, or three depending on the machine? As much as five. Okay. Yeah. So between one and five? Something like that. Yeah. Okay. And remember you guys, these are the little things that we talked about in the video with Bruce. Perfect. See how they're already on there? So those are the little guys we talked about with Bruce. 
Do you have one more favorite for us? Um, one more favorite. Let me think about that for one second. Um, probably our Big Mo. And that is our callus bit. And the reason I like it is it doesn't have holes in it. And oh. holes don't really do anything. It's been disproven. So, <laughs> holes harbor bacteria. So yes, they we don't would. like it. Yeah, so we don't like it. So we like this one because it doesn't have holes in it. And what does he do? And he's a, he's to break down calluses. Okay. Yeah, you, know, you don't want to remove them, but you want to smooth them down. So, so really the holes would be kind of be like a pumice. Kind of, yeah. So stuff, it would stuff have like the stuff stuck in, there. stuck in there like a pumice. That's my thought, yes. Yeah. Ew. Ew. That makes sense to me. Yeah. I'm feeling the ew. So I always struggle like with fine, medium, coarse. Like what does that mean in terms of grit? Okay, like, so when on should diamond. I choose a fine? Well, I would choose a fine or a medium to prep a natural nail plate. I actually don't use on a diamond a heavy grit unless I'm working on calluses. For a natural nail, you would never need that. So we promote something medium or fine because you're not disturbing the natural nail plate that much. You just okay. want to remove shine. So, um, when would I ever use a coarse? Um, the only time I use a coarse in terms of the, almost never in diamond except for the pedicure bits. And then on something like this, our Swiss bits, um, if you're trying to remove gel polish quickly, something like that, or in terms of super coarse, you have something that has teeth on it. But generally speaking, okay, on a carbide, super coarse, if you're gonna cut in a smile line, a lot of us aren't doing that anymore. I do it all the time, so. So if you're still kind of doing that old school, cut a smile line in your acrylic, um, if you're debulking someone debulking. that came in from a non-standard salon and their yes. nails are two inches thick, or maybe you're just taking length off. That too. Yeah, you could do that. So a lot of people like to finish file with these. <laughs> Excuse me. I, I don't use that. I actually use that to finish file? A lot of people will use this to finish file. I don't find it necessary. And I feel like when you have a sharp edge like that, you have to slow yourself down because you're going to cut somebody. Right. So I prefer to use something like one of these, which is a skin safe bit, with the exception of that one. He's not skin safe. Right. Anything with a cutting edge, you have to be more careful with. Yeah, I do like the ones that have the little rounded edge if I'm going to be working around the side rolls. Right, and something that's rounded is going to be more skin safe. Plus, if it's like skinnier at the top, more narrow, you can see around it a little bit easier. So that's my top choice. Yeah, I do like that as well. Yeah. And my clients love these little ball ones. They feel like they're getting a little massage. Yes. So that always cracks me up too. Well, thank you so much for your time in the middle of the busy show. I super appreciate it. Hi, Bruce.